Let's take a closer look at simple harmonic motion by looking at the displacement time graph of a simple mass on a spring. So suppose this mass on a spring is on a frictionless surface. And I want to investigate what the graph of displacement versus time would look like if this spring is oscillating. So let's I really want to just do this qualitatively. I don't really need numbers, but to make it easy for ourselves, let's say that when it's pulled back here, we have it's pulled back one centimeter. So of course, when it oscillates the other direction, then it also oscillates to one centimeter. So just so we can have the number one. So our x is in centimeters, and the farthest it ever goes is one. One centimeter forward in the positive x direction, and one centimeter in the negative x direction. Let's also suppose that position C over here is the way we start. So we're starting by pulling the spring out to a positive displacement. And we're asking ourselves what the displacement time graph would look like. Now we also need to know some way to relate this to the time. So in other words, we need some kind of a number for our period, or we don't need a number. Let's just pick a mark on our time scale. So let's suppose that after this point, it has completed one revolution. And obviously, after twice that many, it will have completed two. So that on our graph, we can just fit about three revolutions in here. Let's just start by quickly pointing out some points that we know. Like I said, we're going to start at positive one centimeter. So the start of our graph is going to be right up here. We know that by the time it's completed one revolution, it's going to have to be back there. So we're going to have to have another point at that, a one centimeter displacement. And actually, every time it starts over again, it's going to have to be in the same spot. So we know those points. We also know that halfway in between is where it's at negative one centimeter. So halfway between, when it's completed half a revolution, it is at negative one centimeters. Now we have to ask ourselves, how is the motion going to look from one of these points to the next? Is it going to just go straight from this one to negative one, back to one, back to negative one every time? Or is it going to do something else? Well, what do we know about this graph? If we look at the slope of a distance time graph, we know that the slope is equal to rise over run. And since the rise is displacement and the run is time, this is equal to velocity. So the slope of a displacement time graph, of course, is velocity. So if my graph would indeed look like this, that means I would have constant velocity starting at displacement of 1 to a displacement of negative 1. Then all of a sudden, the velocity would switch. And then I would have a different constant velocity. Then all of a sudden, it would switch again. And I would have another constant velocity in the reverse direction, etc. We know if we look at a mass oscillating on a spring, that's not how it works. It's going to start off at one centimeter going very slow as the, as the spring speeds it up. It's going to speed up, speed up, speed up. So here, it actually needs a very small slope, right? a, a low slope. It's going to speed up and speed up until when it's halfway, or actually back at the equilibrium position, it's going to have a very steep slope. And by the time it's back, to position B, it's going to have a very uh, not so steep slope again. So this is kind of going to be a curvy line looking like this, right? So let's just fix up our graph a little bit here. And we should be able to recognize that our motion looks something like this. As we're nearing the endpoints, it slows down until it reverses direction. When we're halfway, then it's going at a very fast speed. When it's at another endpoint, it's slowing down again until it reverses direction. So obviously, this is just a quick sketch, but our graph should look something like this. We've got slow speed, speeds up, speeds up, slows down again, speeds up, speeds up in the forward direction, slows down again, etc. Now, a quick side note, you should notice that if we would have had this spring oscillating in the vertical direction, suppose we had a spring in the vertical direction, and here's our mass hanging on it, and this is where it was in the compressed uh, spring. If this thing would oscillate all the way down and back up, we could imagine dragging this graph right across our spring. Suppose there was a, a pencil or some kind of a marker right on our mass. 
and we got this thing oscillating and then we just dragged our graph across it this little marker would actually exactly draw this sine shaped graph and now I just mentioned it's a sine shaped graph so either you can call it either sine or cosine depending on um, where you start in this case we technically have a cosine graph because we know that the cosine of zero equals one so at this point zero our graph is at the one position now this is actually a really cool fact that our graph our displacement time graph of a simple harmonic oscillator behaves as a trigonometric function as a sine or cosine function this means that this motion is intrinsically related mathematically to things like circles and this becomes quite important in our ability in the future to be able to analyze these now most of the analysis we do at the physics 20 level does not really delve into the math of sine and cosine but it is worth noting that this is how these simple harmonic oscillators behave you might be wondering if the, that kind of behavior would be the same if we had a pendulum so if a pendulum is swinging back and forth past an equilibrium position would our motion also follow a sine or cosine function and the answer is for small enough angles yes as long as our angle here is less than about 15 to 20 degrees then it will we could graph displacement versus time by doing time on the x-axis and theta as our displacement and it would do exactly the same thing it would follow a cosine or sine function the same way as the other one did. Now notice that it's only for small enough angles. It doesn't work if we lift this pendulum all the way up to 90 degrees. And the reason for that is we actually have components that are acting as the forces on this mass. We know the force of gravity acts straight down and we could split that into its components of a parallel and a perpendicular component and it's it's only components of the force of gravity that are acting as the restoring force the force that is trying to bring this pendulum back to its original position and if we take our angle too far that means that our restoring force is not always proportional to our displacement and that was a necessary condition to have what we call the simple harmonic oscillator so basically if we pull this pendulum up too far it's not a simple harmonic oscillator anymore if it's not a simple harmonic oscillator it doesn't follow the sine or cosine functions but for angles for thetas less than twenty degrees it's really really close and this is called the small angle approximation again for the physics twenty level we're gonna always use the small angle approximation so we're not gonna do any analysis on situations where the angle is too big we'll just keep our thetas under about fifteen or twenty degrees and we can analyze this the same way we do with the mass on a spring